I am going to demonstrate uh, creating a histogram in Excel. Um, Excel has a built-in histogram chart type, which I am not going to use in this demonstration. I'm going to create my own histogram, and I do this for a couple of reasons. One, I like to have more control over the buckets or bins in my histogram, and so I'm going to select those on my own. And second, I'd like to see this histogram with two data sets on the same chart, and Excel only gives me the opportunity to use one. So we're going to use the column chart or bar column chart type for this. So I have two data sets. This is in a table called sales. So I have sales A and sales B. And I'm going to follow the logic that is used in a box and whiskers chart and call things that are further out in the data set than one and a half times the interquartile range below the first quartile or one and a half times the interquartile range above the third quartile. I'm going to call those outliers and ignore them in setting my buckets. So first I'm going to calculate my quartiles and then the interquartile range and I'm going to figure out where the outliers are. So quartile, I'm going to use the built-in Excel function quartile.exc for exclusive. There's a quartile.inclusive. These two functions do almost the same thing. Um, Excel's box and whiskers chart defaults to exclusives, so I'm going to use that. But it's a little bit of how um, Excel decides or the, how these functions decide to choose the quartile if there's not an exact number of elements to fit into each quartile. But quartile X will work for us. Um, I'm going to use a structured reference to sales a data set, which is the first column, and I'm looking at quartile one, two, and three. So 25% of the sales A data is below 82, and 25% is above 111.75, and the median is 96 and a half. I'm going to do the same thing for sales B. Calculate quartiles one, two, and three. These data sets are pretty close to each other. It looks like sales B is a little lower than sales A. The interquartile range is quartile three minus quartile one. And the outliers, as I said, is quartile three plus one and a half times the interquartile range. So anything above in this first sales data set of above 156 or above 130 are going to be considered outliers. And below quartile one minus one and a half times the interquartile range. So anything below 37 or 52 is also considered an outlier. Now to build this chart, I'm going to have to select a set of buckets, right? I, you need the same set of buckets for both um, sales data. Looking at my outliers, it looks like sales A has a wider distribution. So I'll use these outliers the 37.38 and the 156.38 to set up my buckets. I've got a table or I've got a range here that's going to allow me to create 20 buckets. So the first point starts at 37.38 and then I'm going to do 37, the previous bucket plus top of my range, block the reference, minus bottom of the range, block the reference, divided by 20. And that should, if I copy the formula down, I start at 37.38, I end at 156.38, I have 20 equally spaced buckets. To count the elements in each range, I'm going to use the frequency function that is an array formula that takes the data, so sales, sales A, and it takes the bids. Close parentheses. Control shift enter. So select the entire range. Start typing your formula equals frequency. Sales, sales B. The bins. 
and then control shift enter gives us our formula. Now I like, and this is a personal preference, I like my histograms to have the percentage of observations as opposed to the count of observations. And this is because if I have a different number of observations, of course my counts are going to change. But if the distribution is the same, the percentages should stay similar. So I like to look at this. So I take my count and I divide by count of sales, sales A. And that tells me what percentage of the observations are within a particular bucket. So 2% are below 37.38, 4% are between 67.13 and 73.08, and so on. And let me do the same calculations for sales B. And now I have my data, my, the chart that I'm interested in, the histogram I'm interested in is going to contain these two columns of data. So let's go ahead and insert the chart. I'm using a 2D column. Put it up here. So here's my 2D column. The first data set, well, it's a series one is in blue. Second data set, series two is in orange. I, my x-axis labels are not correct, so I'm going to go to Select Data, click on the horizontal axis labels. I want those to be buckets. So now those are correctly labeled. And then I need Series 1 and Series 2 to have sensible labels, so I click on Series 1, click on Edit, choose the series name to be cell B1, and series two, edit, series name, sales B, sheet one, C1. And you can see now those are labeled sensibly. And then I've got some formatting to do to clean up my chart. Uh, to start, the legend down there doesn't seem quite right. Let's go to more options. Let's allow it to overlap and be on the right. So there's plenty of white space over here. So we've got that. There's our legend. Um, charts typically should have axis titles. So these are our buckets. And these are the percentage of observations. And then I need a chart title. I'm going to use a little trick here because <clears throat> it's a nice trick to know. So this will be histogram, histogram of sales data, monthly sales data. So a nice trick to be able to do, and you can do this with our chart title, with the um, axis labels and so on, but I'll use the chart table. If we go up into the formula bar and click equals and click on our cell, then our chart title is a cell reference. And that's nice so that if I decide to change the cell reference, my title updates. So looking at this chart, I've got a correctly formatted chart. I have my axis labels. My numbers are sensible, have num sensible number formats. I've got my legend, which I need because I have two data sets here. I've given my chart a sensible title, and that is all. Thank you for listening.